Hi everyone, it's Ruben here again. In this next video, I'm going to give you an overview of a generative model developed by Brendan Lake and I to account for handwritten character concepts and to complete the OmniGot challenge. So in our paper, we developed a generative neurosymbolic or GNS model of handwritten character concepts. Now, the model represents characters as a probabilistic program for generating new examples. Now, in this probabilistic program, a character example is generated by iteratively sampling the next part conditioned on the current image canvas. And the part samplers are parameterized by neural network subroutines. And once you've sampled from your neural networks the specification of the next part, there is a symbolic renderer which is used to translate those primitives into an updated image canvas. So I like to demonstrate this by just walking through kind of sequentially what the sampling process looks like. So as you can see in the first line of this pseudocode for this program generate type, we have C0. That's where we're um, initializing our image canvas as a blank image. Now this canvas is going to be the memory state for the program as we're drawing a character sample. Now at each time step, we go ahead and we sample the next part given the current canvas with the procedure generate part, which is a neural network module that sequentially generates a stroke while attending to the canvas. So specifically, there are two kind of sub modules to the part generator. The first, uh, which is shown here as the location model. This is a convolutional neural network that simply reads the image canvas in and predicts a, a two-dimensional coordinate for where the stroke is going to start. Now, the second part is the stroke model or the trajectory model. Now, this also has a convolutional neural network component that reads the image canvas and then has a recurrent neural network or LSTM component, which is sequentially generating the trajectory of the stroke one piece at a time while attending to the image canvas. So uh, after we sample the next part, we have all of the kind of specification for the part that we need, and we render this stroke to our image canvas using a symbolic renderer. And we sample a termination indicator, which tells us whether to stop or to continue with another stroke. And we re repeat this process until we reach a termination and then return the final character type. Now, um, an additional token level model describes how to generate different examples of a character type by adding variability through things like motor noise, affine transformations, and other variations. As you can see, I've kind of visual, helped visualize this by showing three different instances of this particular character that might be sampled from the token level conditioned on a particular character type. And all of the parameters of this uh, GNS model at both the type and the token level are fit using a background set of characters from a subset of the OmniGot uh, data set. And later on, the model was evaluated on some different tasks using novel characters from new unseen alphabets. So the GNS model represents the, the forward generative process for how characters are produced from latent motor programs. And we use a Bayesian inference to work backwards through that generative model and to reason about the most likely motor programs given an observed character image. So basically just inverting this generative model using techniques from Bayesian inference to reason about latent variables or latent stroke trajectories given an observation. And we use this machinery uh, to help support a variety of fuchsia concept learning tasks. So this is really the core for how our model is able to perform the OmniGot challenge of fuchsia concept learning. So that is a brief peek at our generative neurosymbolic model. If you'd like to learn more about the model uh, or about how our few shot concept learning experiments, uh, please check out the paper from ICLR 2021. Thanks.